Welcome aboard the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Podcast, where we're dedicated to helping first-time and experienced boat buyers find the right boat at the best price, so they have years and years of boating fun, because life truly is better on a boat. Today's podcast is sponsored by the Boat Buyers Secret Weapon YouTube channel. Don't pay too much for your next boat. Just visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save to watch a short video. Now, let's hop aboard and have some fun. Welcome to the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon Podcast. I'm your host, Captain Matt, and today we're talking to Mark, who is a, a recent boat owner. He bought his, his first boat, uh, I believe, last July or, or this July. I'm not sure, but uh, we'll find that out, and we'll find out kind of his experience and the advice that he has after, after buying his boat during COVID kind of going through the last little bit of being a, a new boat owner and um, and anything that he's experienced that I think would be valuable. Mark, thanks for joining us today. No, thanks for having me. So it was, was it this July or last July? It was, it was last July, about a year ago. Okay, so, so day, you're yeah, just, just over a year um, as a, yes. as a first time boat owner? First time boat owner, that's correct. Tell me, tell me what got you, um, thinking about, hey, a boat could be right for our family or, or for me. I don't even know what your situation is. Yeah, so it was for our, our family, um, both my family and my uh, my parents and brother. We all we live in Central Texas, and uh, there's a lot of lakes. So it's been something we've wanted to do for a while. It really didn't have anything to do with COVID, actually. It just kind of happened to be the timing when we had just st- started really ramping up the discussions about it. And uh, we had rented boats they have plenty of places to rent but it wasn't ever the greatest experience um you'd get pontoons they'd be underpowered kind of dirty um it's yeah. just and you'd be real real time oriented you know you kind of get out there and you're out there an hour and a half like oh we got to get back and it's still very expensive i mean it was it's several hundred dollars for four hours not including gas um so it's it's not an inexpensive thing to do. Um, you know, we one of the boats we rented, we got out and there was no anchor. The depth finder didn't work. Um, <laughs> a bunch of beer cans and trash cans that hadn't been cleaned out. It just, <laughs> it, the experience wasn't fantastic. Um, and we actually looked into the boat club because there's several boat clubs in our area, um, and those are also very expensive as well. But it wasn't so much the expense as it was the availability. You know, they have different tiers in which you can uh, buy in kind of like a good, better, and best, if you will. And, um, but it's, it's several thousand dollars and five, 600 bucks a month, but you couldn't be, um, you couldn't get on a boat for at least three weeks. And so kind of how it works is that you always want to have three reservations at one given time. So that way you're kind of always have something on the books, um, But with young kids and just schedule changes, a lot of times we're just sporadic. And, I mean, it's just difficult to say, hey, in in three weeks on a Saturday, we're going to go out to the lake. I mean, we may have something going on. So that was I I felt was kind of a hindrance. And then you're locked into that year contract. Um, So we just – we kind of explored that option and then just said, you know what, let's just see um, what it looks like to purchase and – uh, even though it was during COVID, the availability of boats had, I mean, there was still plenty available at the time. I mean, they were starting to sell, but mo- most importantly, the interest rates were very low. Um, and so it, it, there was actually deals to be had. So we um, it settled on a, a Harris Tritune, um, and it has um, a 300 horsepower uh, engine. It's the 250 Solstice. And nice. uh, we've been real pleased with it. I didn't think that we would want a pontoon at first just because the only thing that I had to compare it to was generally the um, kind of the bad experiences we had with, with renting a boat. Um, but the sales guy was like, hey, just trust us. You know, let's do a sea trial. You'll see these things are very, are very fast. And so we did a sea trial on a Bennington, um, and it was it was very good. I mean, it, was, it blew us away as far as their performance, like you mentioned, kind of in in your videos. So, um, but ironically, so the two dealers we have in our area was Bennington and Harris, and so it was hard to to choose. Hey, who's better? And so that's when I kind of came came across some of your videos reviewing both um, Bennington and Harris, and so they're very helpful and. 
talking about the construction and, and all the different factors and, and variations that, that went in there. So that's ultimately kind of how we, we made the decision was after uh, watching some of your reviews. Perfect. Well, that I, I, I love that. And, and um, I, I'm interested to hear a couple of things from you that you mentioned is one that I want to point out is you, you like the water. You clearly enjoyed being on the water, but the rental wasn't right because they're kind of crappy boats. They're usually not well mm-hmm. maintained. You don't know what you're going to get until you walk down the dock and you're like, it's that one. And you know, you're like, mm-hmm. crap. Um, the yeah. boat club, great for some people, but it, your family is kind of like mine. I've got a, a seven and 10 year old. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow for sure. So planning right. three weeks out to go boating, it's more like, Oh, the weather's nice. Should we go on the water today? That's how right. we make our decisions, and, and ownership is the only way to have that. I call it boat freedom. I don't yes. have to ask a friend. I don't have to check the schedule. I don't have to see if a rental is available. It's just boat today? Yeah, nice. Let's go. And then two hours later, we're on the water. Uh, so right. let me ask you, 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 you sort of you went through that progression. You said boat club? No. Rentals? We know the like the boat. So, so you, you did exactly what I, I share with people is – See if you like it first before you spend, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollars on a, a boat. Mm-hmm. Um, you did that. Now, what did you do? When did you start like searching for actual boats? When did you start doing your research? How long did that all take? It actually, well, it was fairly quick. Um, I mean, we over the period. Well, we had rented, we rented boats now for. Uh, a while it was one of these things that we would just do it once a year and we always say yeah hey, we just we need to do this more but again it's just it's very expensive so it's just something we yes. were just kind of hesitant to get into but then it, it was kind of just a family decision um you know it's going to tie up some resources but if it's something we want to do we let's just go ahead and do it so then the research part i would say from when we started to look to actually deciding on a boat, I would say two and a half, three weeks. And I mean, the internet's a powerful tool because of channels like yours, people with vast experience. I mean, um, in fact, one of the examples I'll give was, um, so Bennington was saying our construction is better because we pre-drill a hole, put the bolt through it, screw the bolt down essentially to the deck versus Harris just screws it in. Well, I, I believe you mentioned in one of your videos that that can be stronger Granted, you have skilled labor, and they didn't draw a bigger hole or et cetera, et cetera. And then actually what Harris does is basically the, the screw is a very high-powered screw that almost fuses to the deck itself. So you really can't say one's better. It's just kind of overall construction. So I would have never known something like that because, um, in fact, they even had a display, and it, was, it showed um, how the hole was drilled how um, it was attached and it's like, well, that looks pretty sturdy to me, <laughs> you know? Um, <laughs> so, you know, it, I mean, I get it. It's, it's a, a sales tactic. I, you know, I appreciate it, but um, it, you want to be able to do your own research. So I would say over the, once we decided, Hey, it's, it's going to be either a Bennington or a Harris. Um, we started just reading, watching the videos um, just religiously for uh, a couple of weeks. And then um, we did the sea trial with Harris. And then just decided on. And then also the other thing that from watching your videos was the dealership and that we decided to keep it on a uh, wet slip, which is right around the corner. I mean, probably two miles from the dealership. So um, we didn't buy a trailer uh, because there was really no need to um, because we're going to keep it on the water. And this dealership will anytime we've had an issue, we, we, we've had numerous just minor issues. We can talk about them here in a minute, but I just take a picture send an email and they come to the slip service it and we don't even have to be there. Um, even if they have to haul it out to do the 50 or hundred hour service, they'll haul it out for us, do the service and then put it back into the slip, lift it on the hoist. Um, so it's pretty easy. So I, I think that was definitely um, the other decision is the Bennington dealership, which is a little further away. And these guys are real close in the area. So I, that's kind of what made us make the ultimate decision, which from even just seeing in this first year, uh, right now I've, I've, got, I've got an issue. I can't get my interior LED lights to come on. I don't know if it was a fuse or something, but I said to email them um, after troubleshooting, and I said, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll get out there in the next week and fix it. So um, the dealership was the other important part. Yeah, it, it's really interesting that that people don't think about that when they, there's so many other things to think about 
you're like, I want the light layout. I want to make sure I don't buy a, a, the wrong brand or the wrong style or the wrong horsepower. And that dealer relationship kind of gets um, forgotten about. But it, it's I'm glad that you mentioned how important it was and, and just the sheer convenience of location matters to a certain extent. You know, it's um, was was there a was there a drastic difference between the dealers or was it that location that really pushed the Harris dealer over um, the, the line for you guys? Yeah, maybe a combination of both. I think the other deals, I mean, it's still local, so I still think they would have been able to service it. But just um, given that this the Harris dealership was literally around the block from where we keep the boat, and, uh, you know, it, sales is everything, as I know, and you, you sold boats, just developed a better relationship with those guys and um, and just liked them. And, and then once from doing research, from watching videos like yours and, and other research, I pretty much determined Benning Harrington or Harris or Bennington, excuse me, is, is like BMW to Mercedes. It's almost kind of first yeah. reference. Um, you got so it. I wasn't super, um, you know, I didn't think one was going to be better constructed than, than the other. And there were still, I said, plenty to choose from um, at the time. I and mean, they had, they had a, a lot of different, model so we didn't feel we didn't feel rushed uh so it would be i it, it could be a lot harder um today one of my friends was going to buy a access wake boat and the dealer told him um yeah you've got 24 hours to decide um because <laughs> it, it will be it'll be sold it'll be sold this week so i'm yeah. not pressuring you it but it's basically you put the deposit down but you got to let us know in 24 hours or we got to let it go and so they ended up not doing it and sure enough, I mean, it was gone that week. So that would be, I think that'd be harder. Uh, I think you'd have to do the research on the front end and then know what you want and then just be looking and then you got to be ready to make a decision. Is there is there anything in your experience, Mark, that really caught you off guard or that you were surprised about that you think other people that are shopping for a, a new boat, maybe specifically a pontoon, that you were like, man, I wish I would have known this, or I wish I would have blank. A anything that you would want to share along those lines? Yeah, I mean, um, just the, the education once you get it, not so much the, the shopping. Uh, I mean, again, I think the internet's pretty powerful. If you like doing research and know how to do research, you can make a pretty um, informed decision. Um, but then it's the really the learning starts once you get the boat. <laughs> um, and yeah. it's, you know, and in fact, when we took delivery, um, we got the wet slip and then we were out on the water, the guys were going over the different, um, you know, all the, the trim and the simrad and this and that it's kind of overwhelming at first. There's just so much information. And then he said, Hey, we need to practice parking. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you're not gonna be able to get this thing back in the slip. <laughs> and so, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> sure enough, we started parking and and yeah i mean when you have that full bimini top up i mean it, it's like a sail especially if you're getting tech getting a crosswind and so um that was kind of really where um you know the education and the practice um starts where you got to know what you're doing it's not as easy as just hey we just got this boat let's invite out all of our friends <laughs> you know for a night on the water, I've owned this thing for 12 hours. Um, yeah, so worst kind of could to... do. Yeah, it is loaded up with everybody so excited. And then you're like, oh my God, this is hard. Right, this thing's hard to park and just learning how to use the, the trim. Um, and because they, they can tell you all day long, but until you, you run the boat and you understand really what that trim does and how you get a boat on plane, if you don't do that in the pontoon, you may take on water and how to sit people in the boat. And really it's, it's taken me about a year um, to figure all that out, even from tying up to a dock and using spring lines. So I don't, you know, I can tie up to the dock nice and snug on the side, but how do I make the boat not go backwards and forward and smash it to the front and yeah. um, all that kind of stuff that really, when you pull up to a dock, mm -hmm. no one's there to kind of help you. You just have to kind of figure it out. Um, so that, what I would say is, um, it, it, once you get the boat, that's where um, I didn't really think I'd have to start getting another education on how to drive it until a couple months in. I was like, I need to spend some time um, studying this. Yeah, I, I think that's great advice. And it's it's fantastic that your dealer took it upon themselves to say, hey, listen, Mark, this is here's your boat. I appreciate the the check that you just wrote. 
but let, let's slow down and let's make sure you can actually enjoy it. And even with that effort from them, you still felt like, man, there's more I need to learn. I, I know you mentioned my, um, my best boat captain, um, my best mm-hmm. pontoon captain on the water training. I don't know if you've mm-hmm. done that yet or, or have started. Yeah, I'm, work, I'm working through the uh, working through the videos now. I usually I just like to listen as I'm working, but that, that was you actually I need to sit and watch. So I'm I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm working through yeah, them. <laughs> the visuals are helpful there for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so yeah, that, 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 that was really that, taken, that was taking it upon yourself to do that. Any, any comments yeah. about what you've experienced so far or learned on that, even after a year of of um, of ownership? From from what exactly? I'm sorry. From from the best boat captain on the water training. Oh, is there anything you know, that you've learned there that's been valuable? Yeah, I mean, just again from how to operate the trim. Um, you know, knowing I I like what you're saying about knowing how many turns your your wheel uh, on your on your boat or your your steering wheel does in your boat, and knowing basically when you're it's kind of counterintuitive. If you turn your wheel one way, your back your back end is going to go a certain way versus another. It's not like as easy as driving a car and when you really it becomes difficult when you have to fill up with gas or park at a dock and you need to basically wait your turn that's when you kind of need to be able to make those little micro adjustments and so um basically going to a cove which i think is what you did on one of your video um and showing you kind of figuring out how your boat maneuvers you know how do i get my how do i get my back end to go to the left or go to the right you know, how do I spin this thing around in reverse? Um, it, you really, you really have to practice it and, and, and kind of just get the feel for it. Yeah, the the building blocks that that I developed was exactly what your sales guys did when I when I delivered a boat to a new boater. It was, mm-hmm. hey, thanks for appreciate you buying it, but let's go out and make sure that your family's going to be safe and have fun, and, and you're not as stressed as uh, if you were just trying to figure it out. So I, I appreciate you investing in that for sure and support what we're doing here. But I want to go back Absolutely. now to uh, get my little commercial in there. But I do want to. Yeah, I, no, I, I would recommend it. Work. I would definitely recommend yeah. it for sure. <laughs> there I mean, you go. Your... That, Mark, I've tried to get you to say that right there. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but mm-hmm. I want to go back to something else that you said that, hey, we really we love our Harris. We love our dealer. And yet we've had some little minor issues go go. Uh, that have come up. Um, yeah. I, I want you to talk about that. Your expectation when you bought it. Maybe you learned this on the channel. I hope before you mm-hmm. before you wrote that check. But what what's come up and you know how has it been handled? Well, let's let's go about it that way. Yeah. Well, so in fact, it was on one of your your videos, and I did not know this. Um, but when you explained how most of cars in the country are made on assembly lines. I think you're talking about like a Honda Accord or maybe a Camry or something versus a boat is primarily made by hand. I mean, they're not machining metals and stuff and there's stuff, stuff that's prefabricated, but it's, it's humans. It's, it's people that it's work for the, the boating companies who are putting these boats together, which means you have more problems. And so I did not realize that at all. Um, and so, yeah, when we took delivery, in fact, I was just writing some of this stuff down because I had to kind of remember, but um, like our navigation, top navigation light didn't work. Um, our, the drain plug with the built-in cooler uh, on the back, and it, it, it wouldn't drain. So it's supposed to be self-drains and the cool, when the ice melts, it just drains out the bottom. Yep. That did not melt. Um, our front gate, um, we're at, at the... Um, at the front of the boat did not, it was, it was misaligned. It was like a gap. And so if you hit a big wave, the door would pop open. Um, let's see what else the, um, my helm chair, um, came loose, um, just from, from the screws. I've noticed that just a lot of miscellaneous screws just because the vibrations have come loose. And, yep. um, we also had a, they called it a changing room. I don't know if you've seen that, but basically it's a yeah, little door pop-up that, changing room that yeah, pops just, up. I don't know yeah. where it is on the solstice, but yeah, it, it's basically right to the left of, of where the, the captain sits um, on the uh, port side, mm-hmm. I guess. And um, it, it didn't hang properly. It hang it had hung in like a, like a 90 degree angle. So you, you couldn't even get in there. We actually, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think they ever even opened it in the winter time. We actually, put a little camping porta potty in there if we go out because in texas you can be out on the water in january oh yeah um sure. so we've actually used it for that but yeah it just didn't it didn't hang so 
um, just minor issues, nothing, nothing major. Um, but we, but they, they were very good. I mean, we just took pictures, emailed them, they came out, fixed it. Um, and it was, I didn't realize this, but, uh, for, I think it was the first either six or eight months, um, it will, they come out for free, but then I, I couldn't remember exactly what time frame now. So it's still a 10 year warranty, but I have to pay the, the service call. And so, sure. you know, you don't want to call them out for just a loose screw. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes I'll wait until kind of, or I'll, you know, I'll try and fix stuff myself, but I would say overall, the dealer's been, been great. I mean, they've, they've fixed everything. And I certainly, I didn't buy a trailer and even if I did, I wouldn't know where to take it, you know? So, um, <laughs> that would be a huge headache. Um, so, and, and I know it's not just me. I mean, there was a guy right across from us at a brand new Mastercraft and, um, he said the same thing, basically screws coming loose, uh, this not working, that's not working. When it was up with his ballast that he fills, um, fills the tanks up with to make, to create the wave. And, and that was a brand new, very expensive boat. So I think you're just, I think it's pretty safe to say it's not whether you will have issues with the boat it is your, you are going to, um, uh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't so yeah, matter. You're exactly important. right. It, it doesn't matter if it's a Harris or a Bennington, they would, the issues would be different probably, but just mm -hmm. little minor things because they're handmade. It doesn't matter if it's a pontoon or a, a you know, $150,000 wake boat or a, a bow rider. I was just watching a video on YouTube, um, from, a. Uh, Matt's RV review channel. It, he does similar to what I do way better. He's got better quality videos and he's, he sells them, but he said five things your RV salesman won't tell you. Um, and the very first one is your, your RV is going to break. Like it mm. just is going to. So if you want, if you can't handle that, then RVing may not be for you. And I was like, that, mm. I think I made a very similar video um, mm -hmm. in boating because it, hey, it's on the water. It's bouncing around. They're handmade. Little mm -hmm. things are going to happen, but a good dealer will take care of it and make it easy for you. Uh, and, and it sounds like you've got that relationship, which is awesome. Yeah, it would be really frustrating because I definitely have known um, or heard the stories when people um, have told us, even when we've told people, hey, yeah, we can have a boat. And they say, oh, we sold ours and, and kind of have a bad story. But then when you talk to them about it, they bought a used boat. Um, a private sale, you know, um, didn't really have it for a dealer. And I think the going Marine rate, um, for, uh, your mechanic is $175 an hour down here. So, yep. and that's without parts and labor. So now, I mean, you need a guy to work on your boat for a couple, two, three hours plus parts. I mean, even a minor thing could cost you a thousand bucks, you know? So, um, if you, though, if you don't have that warranty issue in place, I mean, that's why it is, um, super important to know what you're getting into. Um, but I think those are the people who don't have those good experiences are the ones who, um, you know, don't, are, don't have good dealer representation and, and just didn't know what they were, were getting into. So fortunately that's not been our experience. Yeah, there, there's a lot of ways it can go wrong if you don't know what questions to ask, what to look for, and what to expect as well. So um, that, that's why I created the channel and why I love to hear from people like you that say, hey, I did what you said. I, I listened to your advice, and it helped, and we made a great decision. And now we've just had a year of fun on the boat with the family. So let's talk about that some. Mm -hmm. um, what's, what's the best thing that you've added or that you bought for your boat? Oh, we've, we've or, bought a lot of or stuff. Um, what, <laughs> yeah, okay. Sure you yeah. Have. So, uh, the, what, what's the, some of the latest best things that you've added that you're like, man, we love X, we love Y, and we love, you know, whatever? Sure. Um, so, yeah, tonight actually we're, we're going out, uh, Sands Kids, uh, just with uh, a few other couple of friends of ours. And um, we, uh, we got one of those aqua lily pads. Um, and so that's really nice. And the Harris has a pretty big, uh, swim platform on the back. And I got the one that I believe is 18 feet long. So our kids can run back oh, wow. and forth on it, but, um, yep. it's heavy and it, it, it's pretty cumbersome. I need two people to, um, have a little, a ratchet strap. I can kind of get it, um, uh, rolled up pretty nicely, but we'll go to a cove anchor 
and then toss that guy out. Um, and really, that's I think that's what you said in one of your other videos. What do you do 80% of the time? And it's pretty much that. I mean, even with the water sports, we'll water ski. We'll take the kids tubing. Um, some of my friends wake for, which we still do. But really, we'll, we'll all take a couple of turns. But then once you fall a couple, three, four times going 20 miles an hour, <laughs> Um, you know, you're, you're about ready to, to, to pack it. I mean, that's, I would say that's the only thing about the, the tri tune, which you can do is wake surf. And it seems like everyone down here, like that's, that's the thing to do is, is wake surf. Yep. Um, but uh, you know, I still think even so we're, I mean, it's hot down here. I mean, I don't see us out on the lake all day, wake surfing. Um, we mainly go out, cruise, anchor, swim, you know, do a little water, water sports, but I would say definitely the, the lily pad has been a big hit because the kids can't just appreciate the nice views. They got to have something to do, of course. Um, and that thing's pretty cool because they can, they were jumping on and off the back of the boat. I just didn't really like them doing that because, you know, outboard motor, the propeller, propellers there, plus just climb up and down the ladder. It's just a recipe for somebody to slip. Um, yep. and how so old are your kids? I'll, six and eight. Okay. Okay. So, so right in my same ballpark, I got the same thing. Yeah. And so like we'd go out with a couple other couples and then they have their kids. And at one point we had, I think we're at max capacity. We had six adults and seven kids. We were outnumbered. And um, yeah, I just, I, you could tether the lily pad um, to one of your cleats. And so I just cast it out about 20 feet and then just let them, you know, they got the life jackets on and we can just sit in the boat and just watch them as opposed to having them constantly climb in and jump off and climb in and jump off. And, um, yeah, so that's, a, it's that's amazing really for, for six or 800 bucks, whatever it was, maybe a little mm -hmm. bit more for that bigger size, but the games that they can come up with and the hours and hours they can just monkey around yeah. on that. And you know, they're mm -hmm. safe, you know, they're having fun. They got their life jackets on and you can kick back a little bit more and relax even more. Um, without being too stressed so that that's an awesome one i i agree 100 percent that those lily pad big mat quality ones are, are good yeah and, and here's anything else that jumps to your mind yeah i was gonna say um so we bought a big um one of those radar chase tubes so it looks like a, a big sofa um okay and it's it's a two-seater like, like um yeah uh i mean you could put cup holders and it's got cup holders uh i mean it's it, it, it <laughs> okay makes it, it can it can seat two adults. Um, it was probably too big. It was kind of one of those things, you know, we're buying stuff at the boat and you just you just kind of get carried away. But um, <laughs> so the thing is, though, what's interesting is um, you have two places we can tow it from. OK, so you can tow it from the ski tow bar right above the outboard or we have another um, attachment point on the tower because we have an actual okay. tower on, on the solstice. Um, so you don't really want to tow tubes from the tower. That's mainly for skiing and wakeboarding. You generally tow the tube um, from the ski tow bar down by the motor. But um, the dealer was telling me that really it's not recommended because of the amount of force that when that inner tube kind of sinks underneath the water, it creates a, a ton of force on that ski tow bar. And so... I think, you know, we were having adults, um, you know, pulling adults on that too, but I don't know if that's really a smart thing to do. They said they reached out to Harris and asked them about it. And I don't know if they ever got an answer. It says 500 pounds, but the tube itself probably weighs 50, you know, I mean, yep. it's, it's, it's heavy. And then you put two full size adults on there. Plus when it kind of submarines under the water, I was just, I didn't know if you had any experience, if you knew that that was safe to do I, on these tri or not. I am a believer yeah, I'm a believer of when you're pulling a, a Mabel like sofa tube. Um, mm -hmm. We've got we've got the at one of our one of the places we go, we've got the big Mabel, which is a two seater. And then we've got the three seater super Mabel um, as well. And when that thing nose dives, it just buckets up the water. And there is probably 2000 pounds of force. And mm. you may get away with it a couple of times. But if it if it happens too often and it goes too long before you catch it and it, it's happened to me and i'm pretty aware where it'll mm -hmm. nosedive and i'll be like oh crap so i mm -hmm. always tie it off on the i've got a, a harness um that i will tie on on the uh, attachments on the tunes 
um, you know, those little, the little tie down where you, if you were to tie it down on a trailer on the back of the tunes, you've got those little brackets with the hole in it. Yes. And okay. I will, I will hook it on there just with the, with the clip carabiner clips, hook it on both sides. It V's around the outboard and then you hook the tube line to that, um, to that harness. That's how I do it. It's a pain in the butt, but huh. replacing a 1500 pound ski tow bar to, and it's oh well, yeah, in but, my yeah. mind, it's going to happen at some point. Um, hmm, it, it just, hmm. It's just—it's too much force. It's too much force for that ski tow bar. Um, and I think the best in class is Barletta uh, pontoons, and theirs goes up to a thousand pounds. And they hmm. say you can tow you can tow tubes on that; and they'll warranty it. Um, in, in my mind, though, a 500 pounds at some point it's going to snap it and, and you'll see it every, every year on social media, you'll see a handful of people that say, Oh, you can tow it there. You can tow it there. And then you'll see the picture of theirs, you know, broke the, <laughs> broke the base of the, of the decking or it, oh, it just man. snapped it. It snapped it in half. Um, so it, it can happen. And it's just, you're, you're tempting fate in my mind. So I'm, I'm more of a, Hey, it's not that big a deal. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but, it's better than a fifteen hundred dollar tow bar, or you know, thousand dollar up for a cheap one. Fifteen hundred, I bet on your on your solstice, I would imagine. So that, no, that's my recommendation. Would it not? Would it not make sense to, to, to tie it up on the 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 tow point from the tower? I mean, because then it would be kind of upward facing. Would that not prevent it from? Yeah, you could. Down? And, and the reason I don't know this a hundred percent, I'm I'm somewhat educated guessing here, but the reason they say don't tow it from the top is because not because of scooping the water and the force it's more because of the air that the tube can mm. get when you hit a big wake at speed and some of the flat tubes um you know will catch air and fly some of them are designed to do that and i yeah. think that's probably the cya that they're doing on the I tower point versus the it's going to break but t ask your dealer because i'm not 100 percent sure on that yeah. Yeah, that's more of okay. a i think i think that's what they do um, I, gotcha. I mean, all of the warning labels and stickers they're putting on boats now are are uh, right. Of course, astounding to me. But or I mean, you really you could just accelerate a little bit faster and just not not just not crawl, crawl, crawl. And that, that's yes. when you get submarining. I mean, yep. um, I think that's kind of what's happening. So I think maybe if you just kind of like, hey, you're gonna have to hold on because I'm not gonna be able to pull you slowly. I mean, in general, we don't pull the tube at 30 miles an hour. I mean, that's just too fast. I mean. Um, but maybe that's the happy medium is we just, you just kind of yank them out of the water a little bit, you know, more quickly, but I'll have to keep, yeah. I definitely don't want to rip the ski toe bar out of the deck. That would not be, yeah, just be, um, be very aware. Um, I'll, I'll tell you a, a quick story. When my daughters were three and one and a half now, shoot, and my youngest was probably two. So four and two, um, I put them back there on the Mabel. We had just gotten it. And I was coming into the no wake zone. So I was going real slow and I, I hadn't pulled one before. So I didn't know. And it, it nosedived, <laughs> washed <laughs> both of my daughters off the, off the Mabel. <laughs> and, um, it, you know, luckily we had it tied onto the tune, but uh, so it, it can happen easily, but yeah, just be cautious if you're pulling into a no wake zone. Cause it, it's um, it'll nosedive quick on you. So yeah. It, it was I mean, a Mabel. Like it a, was a okay. I got you. So yeah, it was a, a big Mabel tube. I don't think you have that same issue with the flat saucer tubes because they mm -hmm. they can nose dive, but they don't scoop like those like those couch ones I do. I see. Okay, maybe that maybe that's the answer. We just need to get rid of that thing and and just use a flat one. Um, yeah. But, okay. No, that's that's good to know. So, <laughs> but yeah, yeah no, that's, that's I know fun all, stuff and awesome. You know, um, no, I was just going to say, you'll, you'll see though, the conversation going round and round on social media about, yes, you can. I've been doing it for years and you don't need to worry about the dealer. You know, they're just, uh, they're, they're trying to make right. sure that they, you don't break their thing, but anything you else, can. uh, Mark, that you've, that you've got that, that really has, has been a value for you or, you know, even just the practicality of being in a slip, um, that you're like, man, because we did this, it made it so much easier. Um, the first thing, uh, two things, one is the box anchor, um, that really, um, has allowed me to basically just drop anchor anywhere. 
and it, it immediately takes. I had just the, the, um, the Danforth standard, uh-huh. what they told me to get. Um, I didn't like that because you just had to throw out way too much rope. It was like a seven to one type ratio. Um, and the lake where we are, are at, you know, can get pretty deep, even in the coves where, I mean, it's not uncommon to anchor in, you know, 30 feet of water. I don't really like trying to anchor in eight feet of water um, just because with the Danforth, you have to just go way, way too far back. It just, it's not, and boats get too close to you. The box anchor, though, is only a two to one ratio. So in other words, just two feet of rope per one feet of water. So I got a hundred foot rope, spray painted it every 10 feet. And, um, literally you just, I toss it over and tied up. I mean, I'm, I'm hooked immediately. Actually, the, the difficult thing about it is getting it up. I actually have to kind of drive forward to kind of pull it. So I don't throw my back out trying to get it up. Um, so that <laughs> thing has, um, cause there'll be concerts on the lake. I mean, there'll be lots of places you can go and anchor, but I was never really, uh, I, I just want to find a place that I knew I could successfully anchor and would have room to anchor, um, and so I, I would only kind of go just to very specific places, but with the box anchor, um, I mean, that for me at least has worked very well. I got the mid size ones. So I think it's 25 pounds. There's one a size bigger. Um, but, um, it, it works very well and it actually collapses. Uh, it has a are, are you the, you just, Mark, are you the one yeah, that commented? On I asked you a question okay, about okay. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because. I, I have always, and maybe it's just because I've never used the box anchor and I'm, I'm like a, a, maybe a purist or a boat snob or whatever, but I'm like, you don't need a box anchor. Just put out your Danforth the right way and you're fine. Mm. And I think you respond to you like, I did, I did that exact thing. And, <laughs> and this is what's easier. So I may need to go get one and do some tests with it and, and uh, be uh, especially the folding one. Cause it was always the storage issue um, that I was like, yeah. I don't know where you're going to put that sucker on your boat. But uh, maybe so this I need is to called go the, just buy one and test it. Yeah, this is called the slide anchor, and it, it okay. collapses, and it just has this uh, little um, spring that you just can um, basically it's like a lever that you connect it to make to complete the box, and then you can yep. collapse it. And but what I would notice on the Danforth was um, because it have to have so much um, uh, road, it's essentially so much rope coming out, um, especially on a windy day, I would start spinning around even so if i get a good um anchor somewhere and then my then my boat's spinning around and so then i tried an anchor bridle where i would tie off on both um cleats uh, on the on, on each side and it would come okay. to the y and so that would kind of right the boat towards the wind um and so that kind of helped with the spinning but again to go into a small cove is difficult with the danforth that i found because you just you have to throw out um, too much rope and, and keep backing up. It was just, whereas with the box anchor, I literally can just stop somewhere. And so, I mean, if it's 30 feet deep, I'll throw out 60 feet of rope, tie it off and boom, I'm there. Uh, I mean, it's just okay. it's caught right down beneath. So you maybe can, you you're, you're probably, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I, I'm going to go do, I'm going to go do this. And if I, if I do, I'm going to have to take a retraction video to put out there for everybody <laughs> and, and change my best boat captain on the water. The, uh, the anchoring section in the um in the toolkit uh I, I don't know what section that's in but i may have to reverse my reverse my advice here so i appreciate it mark you're teaching me something which is awesome <laughs> yeah i mean no i'm no expert in anchoring but i did i try to do a lot of research and finally everyone um people in our neighborhood i that i asked to have boats and i said you just just give up and, and get a box anchor so that worked um and then i would say the other thing is definitely um, the wet slip is, is, is pretty awesome um, because we had, you know, there's basically three options. You, well, we can't store it at our house. You know, HOA won't allow it. And then yep. the uh, dry stack, um, they don't generally like uh, pontoons or tritunes because they have like two trailers and it's mainly for V-holes, you know. So um, they, and I think they want the boats to be under 25 feet, I believe. Um so we're kind of stuck with a wet slip unless we want to put it in a storage lot. But everyone that I've talked to that has done that, hooking a boat up, trailing her back, waiting in line, it's just there's too much prep time and you end up just not using it. So, I mean, ours, we can be at the water in about 10 minutes from our house, uh, pull the cover off, lower it off the hoist, 
and be out. So um, and if we're out and somebody's fussy, not having a good day, we just come back in. And it's, it's not the end of the world. So, I mean, that's um, if you can swing it, I think is the best. Um, and that's really when we I think we've used it so much because it's not a big lift to say, hey, you know, we've got a couple hours. Let's go out to the lake versus I don't want to go out to the lot and hook it up with a trailer. And I mean, that's just a headache. So um, and because we've got a nice view of the water, what we'll do, I don't really like to be out past dark just because it's too hard to navigate um uh navigate you know at the lake at night you're not supposed to run with any lights on or anything so you're basically just pitch black so there's really not it's not the same experience so we just go back to the slip um i'll lift the boat the boat just a little bit on the hoist um and then just hang up lanterns and we'll all just sit out there for a couple hours and and just kind of hang out so um it whereas if you do the dry stack they close so um, they don't. You're, if you come back in late, you just have to kind of leave the boat out in a temporary slip, um, and it, it's it's a little bit different because if it's raining or something, if you're in the marina, you're completely covered. So uh, that's been really nice. Um, I, I definitely, I think it was uh, the right decision to do that. Which you know, it's a pain because it's also expensive. Um, yeah, there's always the, the trade-off of, of yeah, convenience and expense, and you gotta you gotta choose what's right for for you. But I agree. You'll if you keep your boat in a, a wet slip marina, um, you're going to use your boat more just by the sheer fact it's so easy to do. Uh, hey, let's go for a, a yep. one hour cruise. You don't have to go out for five hours to say, well, it's going to take us two hours to hook up, load it up, put it in, go through the hassle of the boat ramp, then put it back in the lot um, and, and hassle with the boat ramp again. You're going to use it much more, and and you can do the cool things like. Just have dinner on the boat at the slip mm-hmm. where uh, yep. where everybody's having a blast. So that that's awesome. And being in Texas, you can do that. You can leave it in the slip year round there, I'd imagine, right? Yeah, and you don't yeah, year round. I mean, you know, we'll have cold snaps here and there, but I mean, being an outboard, we don't have to winterize. I mean, it, it's not uncommon for Christmas Eve we're in shorts and t shirts. So I mean the water will be too cold to get in. Um, but you know, it'll be seventy five degrees and sunny. So um, you really can boat year round. I would say the other thing at the Marina is kind of annoying is the spiders. Um, yeah, I mean, yes. they're just, they are just everywhere. And, and also, um, the birds, you know, I asked the, the salesman, you know, cause the Marina's covered. I was like, do we have to put this cover on every time? And he's like, yeah, you'll make that mistake once and you'll never do it again because there's birds everywhere. I mean, they can't get, I have a owl, I have a big rat snake, um, you know, got on Amazon, like a six foot long, snake i throw out there <laughs> nothing really works um you let know me, let me give you are, a tip. Are, okay what's the if tip? um if your marina allows it is mm-hmm. go get yourself a huge tarp um so your slip okay. is is probably what like 10 by 30 something along those lines go get a, a yeah. big tarp um mm-hmm. ask your marina if you can do this first and mm-hmm. then it, it's going to be a pain to put up but you put it over mm-hmm. your slip up in the rafters mm-hmm. And it will crinkle and move just enough, and the spiders can't get a good firm attachment for their webs. So mm. it'll really it'll limit the spiders, and there's just enough noise and movement to uh, deter the birds some. Now it's not it's yeah, not right. a perfect fix by any means, but you can get ninety percent better. Now your your neighbors get them all, <laughs> but <laughs> right. if your marina allows it, it makes a world of difference for you. And, uh, you know, a couple hundred dollar tarp, put it up once and it'll last you for, for five years or more if you, depending on, on how good you get it mounted. Yeah. I'll have to talk to him about that. I've not seen anyone do that, but it is definitely, we actually had, um, ducks that had started laying eggs on, um, on our cover. Um, and we had, and it was only, it had been less than a week since we had used it last. I mean, they're just, it's just a lot of wildlife out there so um i mean that's mainly why i mean i'll go out at least once a week just to um kind of clean it off and just kind of keep up with with that um which i mean i I enjoy doing because it's um you know i like being on on the water anyway and it's kind of you know time i can just kind of not have anybody fussing at the house you know young kids i'm sure you can relate so it's it's, um you're gonna don't mind escaping for an hour you know Yep. Yeah. Just start tinkering. And just kind of, but that's been, that's been a, uh, kind of an annoying thing, um, at the Marina, but, uh, and then also last thing about the Marinas is, um, 
we found one that's in a protective cove. We had went to the, uh, the first marina um, and it got destroyed in a storm. Um, and so oh, unfortunately yeah. our boat didn't have any damage, but the, the anchors came loose and the, um, the, basically the, the marina kind of collided at the end. So people who had boats that were on the end, um, you know, they had some damage, but, um, where this particular marina was, there was just no, it, it was kind of wide open. There was really no wave break. And so, um, that was kind of a problem. So then we relocated to another one, which is deep in this cove it's about 10 minutes of no wake zone to get out which can be a little annoying um <laughs> but um you know you're you're well protected from these big you know 50 foot boats that'll roll by and create massive wakes and um so i actually it, picking them a marina they're not all created equal either you know yeah yeah and I, I would say convenience is another factor just like the dealer wrote location matters too of yes. being able to get to it fair you said i think 10 minutes and 10 minutes, yeah. where is it located on the water and, and access and where are you going to boat i think all of that stuff stuff matters and their amenities if that's important to you um yeah, you know bathhouses yep, yep. and Bathroom, swimming yeah, pools all the way up to you know full yacht clubs but um yeah well mark this has been a, a really fun conversation i think i want to do more of these with actual people that have recently bought boats um, mm -hmm. because I, I think there's some, there's some value to be, I just went through this and this is the advice I can share w with that thought. Is there anything else that, that you would say, you know, if you just happen to stumble across this somewhere on uh, iTunes or, or wherever Spotify, um, what, what last little bit of advice would you have for somebody that's considering buying a boat? They're just not really sure what to do next or if they even should, should jump in. I mean, I think how often you think you're going to use it, because, I mean, if it's something, if you're going to buy a boat, but you're only going to use it once or twice a year, I mean, just the operating cost then uh, of each time you're going to use it, it's going to be pretty, uh, pretty expensive. I mean, so if it's something you're going to use all the time, it makes sense to buy it. And I think just the satisfaction of, you know, having your own boat, the boat freedom, you know, taking care of it, uh, I really enjoy versus the rental or the boat clubs like we discussed. So, I mean, if, it, if you think it's something, but you got to jump in. I mean, you got to have, make sure it's, it's your thing, um, which for us, we decided that it was. Um, and so I don't have any reg regrets. And then, yeah, secondly, shameless plug, but I mean, I'm happy to say it, that yeah, I'm researching channels like yours, because it is, it's, it's overwhelming. There's a lot of information, <laughs> um, researching the boat, figuring out which one you need stuff from horsepower to, you know, tri-tune versus the regular pontoon, and then um, how to use the boat and, and do it safely. And because you don't want to be stressed out there when you have a bunch of people, you want to know what you're doing. Um, and so it does take, unless you've grown up around boats, which I did not. So it, it was uh, something that for this whole year, I mean, I've really had to spend some time um, to educate myself. So I would say, um, yeah, channels like yours definitely, you know, it, it's a very helpful, very helpful thing. Yeah, that that's awesome. Were there, I mean, Boat Buyer Secret Weapon, clearly the best of the best, but was was there anybody, definitely. any other channels that you found really helpful that other people should know about? Uh, I don't know about YouTube channels. I, was, I mean, that just, just regular uh, just just, internet just sites research. in general, yeah. Just sites in general, yeah. And, and especially like, for instance, for the anchoring. I mean, I just like, why am I having issues anchoring what are people using going to some of the forums um and that's when they, you know i kept seeing this thing about the box anchor so um yeah just doing that research but i think kind of once you have everything once you kind of have your system um then then it's really not easy like i didn't even think i'd be able to take the boat out out of the slip out of the hoist lift it on my own when you know when i first got it but now definitely it's a little bit of a pain to do it by yourself but i can for sure do it um yeah, you know, uh, so it just it just takes a little a little practice. Um, but yeah, the your the boat buyers, um, best captains, all all the pointers and stuff definitely uh, definitely help because um, there's there's just a lot that goes into it. it and I, I, mean, I can let my six year old drive the boat when we're you know we sit in my lap and we're in open water. Then you try and get into the marina. You want to get gas, and there's six people in front of you. You you got to know what you're doing. Um, Yep. you know, or you know, bad things can happen. So that's, that's kind of when, uh, when you really need the education. 
Yeah, I, I'm all about, and that's why I would be happy to plug any other resources that you found that are valuable because just like the box anchor is, I, I have been boating for over 40 years and I know a lot. I do not know anywhere close to everything about boating and each area is a little mm-hmm. bit different. So learning about, hey, the box anchor really is easier for me. Um, mm-hmm. I, I, I like to pull information from other people as well and especially new boaters because you have a different experience and coming from a different background. So um, just get educated. I don't care where you get yeah. your information from, our channel, our resources, or whoever, um, but just know the salesperson has a little bit of an agenda to try to sell you. Most of them are great, though. Mm-hmm. Most of them are going to give you good information, but there's a lot of information out there. Find what's helpful for you and, and get some local information, too. Because it, it really is it really is important. So, Mark, I, I really appreciate the conversation. This was a fun one. Um, I, as you can tell, I love talking boats, and I love to hear about young families as well. Just knowing that you've got young kids that are now going to grow up with these memories, with time on the water with their parents, and it sounds like grandparents in your situation too. You just yes. that's what the world needs right now. I think I, I think more yeah, of that is going to make a better it. future. So yep, I thanks agree, a lot for commenting on the videos and um and I would love to see a picture of you guys out on the boat sometime if you wouldn't mind me sharing that. Sure, no problem, we'll do. Let's pull up the anchor and run this podcast back to the dock. We'll be back again with another helpful and fun episode next time. If you'd like to be a guest on the podcast, visit boatbuyerssecretweapon.com slash guest and I'll help offer insights into your boat research and shopping experience. Also, we'd appreciate it if you took just two minutes to rate and review this podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. It helps others find us so we can help more boaters. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it in your boating groups on social media. They will certainly thank you. And by the way, if you haven't already, grab your free Boat Buyers Secret Weapon Toolkit at BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash toolkit. And so you don't pay too much for your next boat, Visit BoatBuyersSecretWeapon.com slash save for a short video. Now, before we go, I want to leave you with a few first-time boating tips for when you own your new boat. Number one, know your local boating laws, basic navigation rules, and how to operate your boat safely. It'll make boating even more fun for everyone. Two, be aware of your wake at all times and pay attention to no wake zones because you are responsible for your wake. When maneuvering at slow speeds, you can put out an enormous wake. If going slow, be courteous, save some fuel, and drop down to idle speed just in forward gear to ensure there is no wake. This could save you an expensive ticket and will keep you from being that guy on your waterway. Number three, Boats do not have headlights. They have docking lights, specifically made for seeing in tight quarters and docking. Do not turn your docking lights on while cruising down the water. It can blind other boaters and is very dangerous and, again, could save you an expensive ticket. Number four, follow the maintenance schedule for your boat. Change the oil, impeller, gear loop, winterize if you need to winterize in your area. Inspect your trailer tires, bearings, and grease the hubs if you're a trailer boater to ensure you don't experience expensive and unnecessary repairs that will impact your boating time. Number five, always double check your plug is in, your battery is charged, and the fuel is full before heading out for a day on the water. It could just save your boating day. And if you're a trailer boater, I've got a few extra tips. Number one, at the boat ramp, prepare your boat your gear, and your guests in the staging area. Then when you're ready, back down the ramp, unload the boat, head to the parking lot, and right back down to your boat to be fast and courteous to your fellow boaters and don't tie up that ramp unnecessarily. Next, use transom tie-down straps when trailing your boat. Very bad things can happen if you don't, and they do happen. Three, Check everything in the boat is secure before heading down the road. Seat cushions, gear, keys, towels, even tubes and lily pads can get blown out when pulling your boat down the highway or interstate. And most important, have fun. Enjoy your boat and get on the water as much as possible. 
because life truly is better on a boat. Until next time, this is your friend in boating, Captain Matt.